So I want to say a couple words about problems 13 and 14 in the packet, which deal with sort of what happens when the rational roots theorem loses some of its power. I want to talk about number 14 first. Um, f of x equals x to the third minus 6x. We'll notice that because the constant term in this polynomial is 0, we actually can't apply the rational roots theorem to it. Um, and that's kind of an issue, right? It doesn't tell us anything about whether the roots are rational or not. It just says nothing altogether. So if we want to understand the roots of this polynomial using the rational roots theorem, what we probably ought to do is to understand this polynomial in a different way. And remember, I'm not going to give away the whole problem here, but remember that if we factor a polynomial, that the factored form can tell us something about its roots. Specifically, because the real numbers have the zero factor property, once we've factored, we can split apart the two factors, each into their own polynomial equation, and the roots of these polynomials will coincide with the roots of the original. And it just so happens that one of those roots, x equals zero, is a rational number, but now the, all the possible irrationality in the roots of this polynomial has been shunted off into this x squared minus six. And this is a polynomial that you may be able to use the rational roots theorem to understand. So even if the rational roots theorem can't tell us anything about this polynomial, it can maybe tell us something about factored parts of that polynomial that may be useful. And the second problem contains a word of caution. And the word of caution is, just because we write down a algebraic number using square root symbols does not necessarily mean that that algebraic number is irrational. And so what you'll probably find in this problem is that when you find a polynomial uh, of which this is a root using the same techniques that we've been using, and then you apply the rational roots theorem to it, the rational roots theorem will uncover a rational root for the polynomial of which this b uh, is a root. And so then the question is really a logical question. What do we do with that information? So in our previous examples that we did in class, we used the rational roots theorem to uncover all possible rational roots of a polynomial, but then we ruled all of them out by evaluating the polynomial at those values and finding out that they were not in fact roots. They didn't make the polynomial zero. And so in that case, we concluded that all of the roots of that polynomial are irrational. And because we, in those cases, constructed that polynomial by insisting that our interesting algebraic number was a root, that proved that that algebraic number was, in fact, irrational. But in this case, you're going to find that the rational roots theorem uncovers a rational root. And so this all statement here is not, in fact, satisfied. Looking at the logical structure of this, we're saying that for all possible rational roots, p of r is not equal to zero implies that all the roots r are not rational. Um, but in the case where the rational roots theorem does uncover a rational root, we turn this around to say we've just shown that there exists a rational root with p of r equal to zero. So in other words, the hypothesis of this statement has been falsified, right, because we found a counterexample to it. And that means um, that we don't know whether the conclusion is true. Okay. I mean, we definitely do know that there exists a possible rational root, which doesn't mean that all of its roots are irrational. And so you might think, well, does that mean that some of its roots are irrational? And that, too, is something that's not necessarily true. So we can't actually draw any conclusion in this case. So maybe we can say, the best we can say is that some of its roots may be irrational. But it's also possible uh, that this is a polynomial with all rational roots, and we don't know that. That's another thing that the rational roots theorem cannot do for us. So thinking about the logical structure of how the rational roots theorem works uh, is important for both of these cases where, on its own, the rational roots theorem is not really enough to get us to the conclusions that we'd like to make.